again, everyone. I'm Brian, and this is Reggie, and this is R&B Talks. <laughs> Reg, so you went through it the last couple of weeks, my friend. Bro. Got like a buffalo virus or something, right? Rhino. I, I, look, hippo, whatever I don't it get is, sick. Man. I don't get sick, really. Yeah, you really don't. I don't. Like... I get I get so irritated at my wife because she gets sick all the time. Yeah, because <laughs> she has like respiratory issues and all the kinds of other stuff, right? And I'm just like, damn it! What's this? <laughs> but me, I never, I just don't. And I mean, and if if I do get sick, it's usually like just like a sinus thing or you know something where I can just I just work and do whatever I push through it. It doesn't really matter. I got my ass kicked last couple weeks Uh, i think at church last sunday your wife made the statement that you felt like you had concrete (sighs) in your veins i did i I, okay i didn't have a fever didn't have like i wasn't throwing up or or none of that stuff but i was just i felt my whole body hurt i couldn't be comfortable and wouldn't eat i wouldn't eat didn't eating was like no (laughs) drinking was hard um Ginger ale, that's the only thing I, I actually drank, and I tried to drink as much as I could. Uh, but, but yeah, so there was like four days, four, maybe four and a half days. I didn't eat any. I tried. I didn't eat hardly anything. Like, it was like crackers, maybe a couple ones, you know? Yeah. I tried to eat like a little chicken noodle soup, and it was like, I, you know, I got like half, like four bites in. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm done. You know? And then I'm still, I'm, I'm still not right. Um. All this week, this last week, I've had to, I've, I've had zero energy. Like I've, I've really been, I woke up and felt like I needed to go right back to bed until, and this is all like, it's gotten better now over the last couple of days, but even today I'm still, I'm still not right. So <laughs> Fair enough. It, it's kicked my butt, dude. And, and what, what's really been a struggle for me is this, this is the, this was my last two weeks of my classes for this eight week period. So all the big papers and projects and, and all this stuff was due. And so here I am, I couldn't, I couldn't do any of it for a whole week. I was like a whole week behind and on these big projects and everything else. So this week when I haven't had, had zero energy, can't focus, struggling to just, you know, be around, I've had to like muddle through this stuff. And so I'm just hoping I get a B in my classes, man. I mean, and that for me, you gotta understand for me, I do not do that. That's oh, I like, know. That's not your thing. No, like I, I, I turn everything I turn in is on time. It's like it's to the letter of what they want. It's usually, if not all the points, it's only missing a cut. That's a, that's what I do. I, I take diligent notes because I, I just consider my education really that important. But I couldn't do that. I just I really couldn't. I had to just like muddle through what I could. I wrote a couple papers that I just I don't even know if they were worth anything. <laughs> I mean, because I'm just, I'm just <laughs> I'm dead not laughing the, at that. I'm oh, just saying for you to say that is so. I mean, you know, it's it's like a and it's apologetics work, which is something I'm usually like really into, you know. But thankfully, both of my professors were really cool about answering the. You know, I sent them an email. Hey, look, I'm I'm really sick. I ain't gonna be able to do anything. <laughs> and uh, you know, they were like, yeah, just you you got to turn everything in because you have a de- there's a there's a at that very last day of the week eight week period yeah. you cannot turn in anything after that day period really? it doesn't matter it's it's that it's midnight of that friday nope you're done you're boned at that point yeah so they both said well yeah got until the end <laughs> of turning in so i you know i think i i did skip there was like a couple assignments i didn't even do or half do you know just because i was just trying to get through it yeah well i mean dude you you're uh, reggie <laughs> Yeah, you, you're you, you're 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 not Superman. No, I mean, look, it's it's humbling. I'll I'll say that it is humbling when you just when you cannot you cannot do what you normally do. Yeah, and I mean, I mean so I, I I guess it's it's I guess I feel for those people who like have those like traumatic injuries and stuff that like you know they can no longer do what they could do before. I mean, that's yeah. that's not that this was. Look, this is not like I'm, I'm, I'm some term. It wasn't, but but it's sim. I guess it's similar enough for me to kind of almost be able to have some empathy, you know. But anyway, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm str- I've been str- <laughs> it's been a struggle, but I'm here and yeah. we're 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 back after missing a week. Yeah, I know, but that's okay. 
sometimes you got to take a break, man, and recover, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the way it works. Oh, I wouldn't, have, dude. I'm, I might not have felt so bad, but that was when I was just had. Uh, well, dude, I knew you were sick because you text. We were texting back and forth. And I was like, well, I, in my mind, this is how this went. I was like, I will politely suggest for the sake of him knowing that I, he's my friend and I don't want to kill him, that we missed the episode. Me perfectly thinking that you were like, nope, we're doing it. <laughs> like instantly I got the response. Probably a good idea. <laughs> I was like, he must be really sick. I was like, he must be really sick. So I was like, wow, we're going to not do R&B talks for a night. I was like, for, for our episodes. So I was like, oh, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, man. I mean, it was, it was, I realized it was, you know, and I tried, dude. It was, it was funny as I was, I would even tried to, get, <laughs> I told, I went, I tried to work on, uh, I don't remember what it was like thir- Thursday of that week or something or whatever. <laughs> I sat up here. I sat down on my office chair and got right back up. <laughs> I was like, nope, it ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> you sat like, hey, let's not. <laughs> no, I was like, no. Yeah, I was, and I went right back to bed, man. I mean, it was just, it was just stupid. And I, I don't know. I mean, I still don't know what it is. The doc, I'm going, the doc still wants to take blood on Monday to see what it, to make sure it's not then and whatever. But I, I know it's not the, the 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 thing but um i'm telling you you may actually have cooties yeah it could be cooties like the actual cooties could be cooties now that being said one thing that i've been waiting for for a long time is on the table right there i know and it's a little distracting i'm not gonna lie i know not because it's a bad distraction but because i just want to watch it i know well so, so I've, I've always been in the, in, um, uh, rolling ball structures, sculptures. I think that, well, they call them two different things, I guess. Rolling ball sculptures, though, always been loved those things. Like they have the, David Morrell has these, like, and I'll, I'll probably try to put something of an example in the, in the <clears throat> comments or something so that people can see what I'm talking about. But they're just, they're just fascinating to me. It's like this whole, like, exercise in physics of these, like, you know, all this, and it's just cool as all get out, dude. And I, I'm, so I've always been interested and, uh, I'm, I've talked to my wife about like, you know, one of these days when there's like, <laughs> if, if there's ever like a, uh, we have excess money, I want to, I would love to commission. I mean, it's like, I don't want, it's, it's on my top list of things that I would literally like to do is have a commissioned piece of a really nice rolling ball structure, sculpture kind of thing. That you know could cover like you know a good bit and it'd be sorry. Right, cool. So here's a question: Let's say you commissioned one. Yeah, what are we looking at cost wise on something like? Well, see, that? that's the thing: the cost goes between like what mechanisms and like what things you want to put in there and how big it is and like because you can, dude, you can get them where they're like you know they hang from the ceiling and are like you know <laughs> huge, right? But I, I mean, I'm not talking anything like that. Like a, a, I would want a wall mounted, maybe like you know. I don't know as big as I could get it really, but cause I'm, I would want like all kinds of weird stuff to make sure it had multiple tracks and like switches and all kinds of things just to, and you know, just because I like all those elements and stuff. You are seriously envisioning some serious work here. Yeah. I mean, it's the, all right. cause they take, I've always, I, I actually tried, I bought a, um, they, they make these like plastic little kits yeah. to do your own. Right. Yep. And so I got all that and I was like, uh, but I never had time to like even put that together, much less like the bigger versions of this are like, you know, they're, they're all like welded, you know, welded wire tracks and, and, and electric mechanisms and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, there, there are a lot of, it's a lot of work. And then plus it's a lot of testing and a lot of like making sure the track flows right and all this kind of stuff. So, but yeah, that's my little, that was on Kickstarter. That's called the Electroroll. Whoa. Okay, what is Kickstarter? It's a crowdfunded um, platform for things, right? So, so uh, like in other words, it it takes the people who want to produce something, and you get to directly fund it, and and kind of be with the whole process of how they're producing it and everything else through it. So there's there's a lot. I've I've, I've bought quite a few things off of like Kickstarter or something like that. They even do them for music. Wow. Like, so like an artist can do like a crowdfunded album, right? Or something like that. 
Um, but, but yeah, this was, this, um, there was like a, there's like a, there's been a bunch of things I've bought off there. Just, and it, you gotta understand there's a risk involved, but, um, I, I haven't, I haven't spent, I mean, like, you know, this was, this was probably the most expensive thing I bought off Kickstarter, um, to be honest. And it was just because I thought it was so cool, but yeah, but Kickstarter crowdfunded thing, man. So it's, it's like, it get, throws me when it pauses. I know. It throws me. I'm like, <laughs> Is it over? And then it just starts back up again. Well, I can turn it off. I it's mean, okay. I think, I think everybody's seen it now, but I think you. I think it brings you joy. So I think you should leave it, does, it on. It does, man. And it's it's it. It's just I don't know. This this very cool. It's, it's very, very small. kind of relaxing. It it yeah. It's totally tranquil. It's very calming. It's, calming. And uh, but I, you had to, you know, the the I've had to adjust the track a little bit here and there to make sure it doesn't. It was fall, there was balls like falling off here or like whatever. So anyway, anyway. I'm super stoked. I'm, I'm marvelous is the the name of it. Um, marvelous, marvelous. You introduced me to another thing today I'd never seen. Swoveralls. Oh yeah, man, dude, I love my swoveralls, bro. <laughs> when she's when your wife said that, I almost passed out. I was like, I mean, look, you want to talk about ultimate lounge wear sweatpants overalls? You know, it's like the most. <laughs> You know, just only Reggie, you could take something as simple as sweatpants and turn it into swoveralls. I didn't do that. I mean, it was like this day. I just, well, now, okay. So here's the thing. Swoveralls is actually a brand name. Um, and they don't, they don't make them in big, my size. They don't make them in big man sizes. No, oh, not that's really. Weak. Well, they, okay. They did, but it's like the cut was, I bought, I bought a pair from Swoveralls way back when. And it was just the cuts just all wrong. You know, it was like, it it wasn't like too small, but too it was high in the crotch. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. this is, this is, you know, anyway, uh, that's why I got, that's why I'm very cautious when I buy any kind of sweatpants because they tend to run high in the crotch. Well, it's like, I don't understand. I don't, I, I can't, I don't understand the dudes wearing this tight sweatpant thing and they do that, right? The slim fit. I'm like, what, why, why are you wearing yoga pants, bro? Like, come on. That's just yick. Now I have some, but they're usually kick around the house pants. They're yeah. not. They're not like go out and hang out with the dudes' pants, right? Like, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, look, I, I have enough respect for myself not to wear my sweatpant overalls outside of the house, bro. I mean, it's not. You know, I'm not going to do that. that. That's a little p too far. I know that some people probably wouldn't even. Not not that people would care, but I just don't. That's not. It's like pajamas, man. I'm just not going to go. I'm not one of those people who go to Walmart in their pajamas and stuff and do all that. No, I mean, bro, here's just, I got I'm going to say this out loud. And there's some people going to get upset about this. I don't even care. If I see you out in public in pajama pants and Crocs and a raggedy t shirt, I, 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 I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I really don't, man. I have no desire. Well, it's like, like I, because here's my thought. You knew you were leaving the house. Now, if you had like some sweatpants on or some workout gear and some tennis shoes, and even that takes a certain level of choice, right? But for you to just roll off the bed and just slip into your Crocs and like go to the mall, yeah, you're wrong. Well, like there's there's some cases where like okay, if you go to the pharmacy. I got gotcha, you. Right. Okay. Go to the pharmacy real quick. Yeah. All right. Bounce in there. Whatever. Like pick up your prescription yeah. or something like, you know, you, you, you're, it's your day off. You're hanging out. You're out of milk and you go to, go to the dollar general or whatever grabs. Okay. All right. You, you know, but if you're like out and about, like it's, you know, you're like running errands and going to all these different places in your freaking pajamas and your, your whatever. Come on, man. Well, first of all, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I wear sweatpants everywhere, but, but I, I usually wear a nice pair of tennis shoes, cool shirt, nice ball cap. You know, I don't go like, hey, I want to look like a professional hobo. <laughs> I wear overalls everywhere, though. So, I mean, well, but for you me, but you wear like boots and a T-shirt with it. Well, yeah. and you don't. I mean, I don't like if you rolled up in Walmart with just some overalls on, then yeah, I'd be yeah. like, Reg. No. Come on, bro. No, I don't do that whole like redneck thing where you, they don't wear anything under the overalls. It's just overalls. That's just the ick. But I don't even wear these, the, you know, my moccasins. These are, these are my house shoes. These are what I wear in my house. 
Period. They do. They do not. I can honestly say I've never owned a pair of moccasins. I didn't either, man. I, I tell you, I, I like I love slippers, right? But I, yeah. I I I don't like the ultra warm. I don't need that. Even during the the harshest of winters, I do not want those like fleece lined stuff. It's too hot, dude. I would fleece line myself during the winter time. I'm sure if you I could. would, <laughs> but no, I don't. I I so my my. I found. I finally found. I tried like a what was it Minnetonka or something that was a brand like that that had some just just what the, I think they were called like driving moccasins or something right Dr- did you say driving moccasins yeah, that's, what I, that's what they said at the time this has been year this has been many years ago right okay because I think the the way they're the tread pattern on the bottom of the thing I don't know I digress but and I love them but they didn't last very long at all and then I um these were really expensive. But they're handmade with like top grain bull hide and all this stuff. Top grain, yeah, bull hide. Well, because if I don't, they don't last. Because I wear them every single day. Now, in the house. do you remember the mo- like the the? <laughs> I was gonna say like like focusins, like fake moccasins <laughs> that were house shoes <laughs> that had the like tie string on the yeah. front. My my Pepa used to wear those. It was so funny. They were. I was like. I was suspect of him when I looked at him. I was like, and he got a new pair every year. Like every Christmas, he got the same thing. He got a pair of Focusins. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I used to do. Like I'd buy, <laughs> I'd go through them. Like I just kept, I'd buy like a pair. They'd last for months and then I'd get another pair. Then I'd get another pair. Then I'd get another pair. With these though, they, they fit better. They, and they last like three times longer, you know? So yeah. But yeah, that, uh, I don't go. I don't go out in these because uh, I, I don't. I think that that's a little weird. Not that it would, you know. But I don't. I I, I wear shoes. <laughs> dig it. I dig. I but dig. yeah, I mean, you know, I, do I, you I, even own like a pair of legit tennis shoes? Yeah. Never seen you in tennis shoes, Reggie. I wear tennis shoes a lot. Like if I go out to work, around I've here. never seen you in tennis. I'm either in. Shoes. I've seen you in boots. Like work boots? Yeah. I mean, you wear work boots a lot. But I've never seen you in a pair of tennis like shoes. Like if I'm just going out and getting on my lawnmower, I'll wear usually wear tennis shoes. If I'm going out and running errands with the girls and stuff, I'm usually wearing tennis shoes. But the my, my favorite tennis shoes are the um uh they're called the Beast from I can't remember the brand now. <laughs> but they're the only ones I'll buy because they are just they are the they fit me so well and they don't they don't feel flimsy or anything it's yeah. just like they feel like they can hold me and i, I, I don't nothing know nothing can hold you reggie nothing but they're called the beast i forgot what they are me, me brooks i think the brooks yeah yeah those so yeah i, I mean um and i've bought i mean I, i'll rotate those so i got like you know so the, those will wear out and i'll buy the same pair of shoes i, I, yeah. I that's what i they I work bought. they work right yeah i mean yeah. so yeah but yeah i love i love boots um Love boots. Like I have a really nice pair of uh, Red Wing work boots that I've, I've, I've I adore that I wear if I'm going to get serious with stuff. Like if I'm outside my chainsaws and stuff, I'm usually going to be wearing my steel toed, you know, Red Wing work boots. Um, I got a pull up pair of uh, Justins that I, I wear if um, if I'm out doing stuff on my tractor or whatever. I mean, you know, but yeah, I mean, most of the time if you see me out and about, I'm usually Wearing, I'll, I'll wear usually either the boots or tennis shoes, but yeah. Sweet. We all learned a thing or two about viruses over the last few years. Are we talking just computer viruses or? Yeah. But have you thought about protecting your computer against the latest threats? At EMTCC, they've learned how to fight off viruses faster than Marvel can put up another superhero movie. Woo! Don't know where to start? They can help you develop a plan and implement strategies for that situation. Reggie, did you know they are set up with all the latest and greatest technology to help prevent cybercrime? I did not, but now I do. Absolutely. Visit www.emtcc.net to set up an appointment or give us a call at 1-888-551-888. Two seven seven zero. Mention R and B Talks and receive ten percent off your initial appointment. Remote and on-site options are available. I have a thing with socks, though. Let me say this: I really don't like socks, but you got to wear them with boots. Do you wear socks with tennis shoes? No, I don't. 
You oh, usually don't. If I don't wear socks and tennis shoes, I'll throw, I got to throw them away. My feet sweat. Uh, well. Something ferocious. I don't know. I, I don't really have that problem. I just don't. I know. I just. I'll, I'll wear socks if I have to with my boots because you ha- I have to. That's the, they they ain't negotiable. But yeah, I don't I don't really care for. I don't like putting on. I don't know what it is. I just don't like putting on. Socks. I like a good <laughs> pair. I'm the guy that appreciates a good old classic pair of white athletic socks. Like I don't need my socks to be bedazzled and multicolored. Like none of that matters. I like a good old pair of just white athletic socks. Well, I tell you this, dude. I did. I did buy some like compression socks a, a while back because my dad had so much trouble with his yeah. legs with like neuropathy and all this kind of stuff. I was like, I, I did some research and it was like, yeah, it's a good idea if you're like, you know, if you're working sedentary and all this stuff. The compression socks help the circulation and help the thing. And I'm like, well, okay. So if that can help me out, I do. And I so I'll wear those every once in a while, but. I, I really don't <laughs> don't care for it too much, but yeah, here we are. All right, so I saw something um, wholly disturbing and un-American this week. Sweet. Did you watch the State of the Union address no. at all? No. I read it. Okay, let me. I'll, I'll preface that and say I read a transcript of it afterwards. He, that might have been the most unnecessarily aggressive un-American I mean he basically just took a crap on 50% of the country I didn't I didn't understand I did, like I, I was really baffled when I was reading the transcript like it was hyper aggressive like <sighs> like it was it was it was aggressive in a manner of borderlining on hate speech like the way he spoke about anyone that disagreed with him and then stood up there and just flat out lied like went down his laundry list of things that he in his fantasy world believes he accomplished, which he didn't. Um, it was, it was, uh, it was disturbing. And and it, it coming from a guy who the world is supposed to be looking to as someone who unites a country. He has, that might've been the most divisive speech I've ever, I've ever seen. What? So I really wanted to go back and like, watch it after reading the transcript, yeah. because I'm like, this sounds like you're reading it, you're just reading the words. You're just like, this is, it's awful. What? Like why? Why? What? It didn't even make any sense. To what me. was the point? The point. Here's what the point was. Um, to further divide a nation. It's down to him and Trump now. That's what's going to be. Which let's be clear, we have the two oldest humans on the planet trying to run for office. Um, and he literally like. Took took responsibility for things he didn't do, and then the things that he did wrong, he blamed on all kinds of stuff. Republicans, essentially, like it was, it was very, uh, um, it was the least uniting, least presidential, least peaceful, most argumentative, hot garbage speech I've heard. But what 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 I don't understand here here's what I don't understand is how do you read or watch something like that and still go, he's my, he he's the one. Well, I, I, but, but I don't you know, understand that. That's what I, this is, that's the whole thing with me about, I get how he got there. Mm-hmm. I understand. Okay. It was yeah. like, Hey, look, we are anti-Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to rig election. I still think that don't care. Um, put him in the office. I can't fathom how you would still be pro Biden. Well, I, I go I back to I this whole thing. I, and, and you, I talked to you about this earlier. Yes before we got on about movement versus progress. And I think what you have with Biden is a lot of movement equaling nothing, no progress. Right. And the only hope of him getting reelected on a legitimate level is to, is for him to either lie or fool you into believing that there was progress and taking credit for a lot of things that really he didn't do or didn't happen. Bidenomics (sighs) being the biggest disaster you know, but, you know, and, and I feel like he, look, I feel like even Republicans realize that Trump is not the greatest guy in the world, especially after what's come to light over the last few months about his behaviors, about his business dealings. And I get it. it every business guy has got probably got, you know, dark shadows going on in the background of his businesses if he's a billionaire. But it was just hateful. 
Like he was just a hateful, mean spirited. You could tell that from the, I mean, like even reading the words, you were like, like, like I was, uh, yeah. you know, okay. So, and I'm going to say this and, and I think YouTube might take away our advanced <laughs> features again, advanced features again. Um, it was like a Hitler speech, man. It was, it was really that kind of just hateful, antagonistic, whitewashing history kind of speech that that and again the thing that really shocks me more than anything is still tra we're four years into your presidency man you're going into the run for your second term and you're still blaming a guy that hasn't been on office for four years for all the crap that's gone on you are a garbage president you just are you're just it, it is nothing to do with democrat or republican because both the democrats and republicans have lost their minds and are idiots right now but you are just a garbage president that that literally has the lowest rating, lower ratings than Carter had. And you think by being hateful and divisive, you're somehow going to become more popular. Well, OK, so let's 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 look at this in a different little bit different way. He didn't write any of that for one. Um, yeah, that was not. all from some that was yeah. all from other places. OK. He probably didn't even understand what he was saying. True. Um, so, so I think that was really the mouthpiece of a hateful anti-American establishment that just really needs to get trounced into the dirt, but won't because it's entrenched so much in both parties. Fair enough. I believe that. That's that's what I'm. I mean, and this was probably the most outright example of how much they really want the entire country to be at each other's throats. Yeah. They're, but here's what I, here's the thing. And here's, it's kind of been like a domino effect because the Russia hoax came back. Ugh. All right. So somehow Donald Trump is colluding with the Russian media again, after they proved he didn't do it the first time. Um, it, it It's this, they're going back to the formula that happened when he got elected, when BLM was burning buildings down and smashing out windows and, and Antifa was out there rioting and doing stupid stuff and Portland was burning and Louisville was burning and all these towns were just falling apart. They're going back to the same formula. They're driving us back to that hateful, divisive place because they truly believe if they can push it back there, they can do it again. But here's the problem. Ugh. If you look at the news, yeah. Cities like Portland and Chicago and New York are desperate for help that Biden is not giving. And those hubs of democratic Marxism, as I'll call it, because it's really what they try to define it as, are now like, wait a minute, we might have gone too far. And now he's there. What they're thinking is, well, we'll go back there and we'll fire it back up again. Well, guess what? Nobody's responding. I, I mean, I, I do think that in general, people are just done with it. Yeah. I mean, I really do think that they're the general attitude of like you get you get these extreme. One way or the other, but like most I think most of the, the population who are sane Really, he's done with this nonsense. Yeah, like, I am. You know, I'm, like I don't care. I mean, I'll be, I'll be flat honest. I do not care what party somebody is in. I'm adamantly anti the democratic elite mindset. I don't Marxism, socialistic ideas, or whatever. I'm fervently against. But I'm also, I also want to have critical discussions and work together yeah. to have solutions but we're our whole look our whole government is run by corporate interests by the military complex mm -hmm. by financial institutions that are that yep. are larger than life and and i think that i mean until to be honest i don't, I don't even like it, it would take a, an apocalyptic event i think at this point to to like get anything towards where it should be any rational thought uh, yeah i mean like you look you can't 
it, it, this goes all the way back to our institutions and, and our, our, our universities and like how we're educating people and how we're, uh, gosh, it's so, it's so deep as far as what's been working over the last, what, six, seven decades, you know, it's just, it's, it's insane, you know? And I, yeah. I just, ugh, it's appalling, man. I mean, but I will say this, I still think the United States of America is still the best country on earth. Um, even with all this nonsense, I still, I'm still pretty hopeful for something positive for myself and for my family in the future. But man, I mean, it's, you, you really have to try to be that way. <laughs> yeah. You really have to put some effort. Yeah. I mean, right. it, that's a whole, like I, I, you have to make it your mindset, you know? Well, and here's so, my question too. And, and when do we realize that, Nothing that's happening right now is benefiting anyone. Yeah, I mean, it's not, there's no, there's nothing coming from our government that's beneficial. You know, there's a state right now that's trying to pass a bill. And this is a pretty controversial thing in my mind because the wording of it kind of caught me. Mm -hmm. There's a state trying to pass a bill that if you're a teacher, and you help a transgender child transition without involving the parents that you have to register as a sex offender. I don't necessarily know what to think of that. Like, like I get the meaning of what they're trying to do, like keeping the parents' rights involved, mm. but also do you ruin someone's entire existence because essentially that's what happens. If you deem if you label somebody a sex offender, their life is ruined. Okay. Here here's what I'll say though. You're ruining someone else's life though too. Right? I mean yeah. I don't know about that. I I I think there's there's I think <laughs> I would say it's criminal. Yes, I would definitely say it's prosecutable. But, but what but, I call it But I don't think a sex I don't think that's in the same ballpark though as sex yeah, offender. I don't think it is either. Okay. I think that's a whole different f thing. Um I, and I like like you. I think I understand. I mean, I understand what they're trying to do. Yeah, but it's it's not. That's not the right. But it's not healthy. No, I mean, mm -hmm. there's just. There, I think what you're going to see happen is there's going to be more extreme things happen to counterbalance the other sides of the coin. Of course, and and that's like a one illustration of it. It's just like, well, we're just going to throw on this and make it horrible. You know, and it is horrible for the kid. Don't get me wrong, but like, man, there's a right, there's a right and a wrong way to do things. Yeah, you know, and I, it, it, that that sounds divisive and and just really not healthy either. Well, I've also heard that there are certain states that want to prosecute that as a, you know, as a hate crime. I don't think it's that either, right? I think it's. I think it's a I think it's an ideological misconception that there are no parental rights and I think that yes there has to be some level or measure of punishment for doing something like that but I don't think it's a hate crime or a sex crime. Here's what I think that's that that lessens the real hate crime. That that lessens the real sex offenders. Yeah. That act. I but think I also that, think that, this might also be the reversal of the other side of wanting to call, you know, you know, child sex offenders, minor attractive, minor attractive. Yeah. You get, you know, get, I get, don't get out of here, dude. Get out, get out. A pervert is a pervert. <laughs> like you just can't, you can't no. fix that. Right. Like, nah, there's no, I mean, look, I is, is this is what I'm saying. Like, the like Robert Kennedy Jr. Yeah. He's probably the most centrist politician I've seen in a long in time. Probably the last 20 years, yeah. Yeah. He's not 80 something years old either. Yeah. So there's that. I, I would much rather have a guy like that than I would extremes of either side. Right? Yeah. And I think I'm 
uh, it's a little off where you, <laughs> we can't, we, we, we have to be, we have to be led by a, a mindset of unity and collaboration. We can't be led by a team A, team B mentality. Yeah. On, at that level. So, so that's, that's for me, <laughs> there's going to be extremes no matter what. And there has been in our whole entire country, history of our government in the country, there's always been extremes of things. There has. But there's always, well, (laughs) there usually has been a group of centristic people who work in the middle to kind of make things at least somewhat balanced. We just don't have that anymore. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's gone. It's It's just trash. Like Joe Biden has just decided to hate half of the United States. And Trump has decided to hate half of the United States. They're just hoping Again, one gets 51 and one gets 49, right? None of the like, above. Like for me, <laughs> you know, what happened to the days of the, you know, I mean, Kennedy was a good Democrat back in the 70s. I mean, he was a morally a cad because he slept with anything that would move. and But he was a centrist Democrat that tried to be common sense. Reagan was a centrist Republican that tried to have common sense and, and unite the parties. Like what happened to politicians who just wanted the best for the country and not really anything else. Um, but again, you know, this discussion, I had this discussion earlier today with someone, um, you cannot be a politician anymore that cares about the people because if you are, you will get railroaded. Um, Political ambition nowadays has more to do with being wealthy than it has to do with the country. Uh, I do not, I do not know of a poor politician. Look, you can't, you can't tell me that these, if you look at people's net worth, but before they get in office and after they get office, you got to, and they only make, a couple hundred grand a year and you're, they come out with a net worth of like, you know, $30 million. Yeah. Give me a break, dude. I mean, but come here's on. the thing though, right? Like when you become a congressman, as far as what you get paid, you move into the top 1%. You're making 250 grand a year. You, you move into the top 1%. Yeah. Congratulations. If you can't survive on the top 1% in the top 1%, you're pathetic. If I made two hundred fifty grand a year, I would have no financial worries. I mean, look, but, well, yeah. I mean, but I'm also not flying on private jets and throwing big soirees, and yeah, I'd be chilling at the house watching Batman. It's only. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have I have no issue with with people making money. I don't and, either, and a lot of money. But but but, I mean, because that that's how a free market in a, in a capitalist should, should, should work. I I have a lot of problem with our public servants who make money while they're in office. That is very much not accounted for. Well, or on top are allowed to do insider trading and things like that. And it'd be legal, right? Like, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, come on, man. You I mean, have you those people have access to things that we don't have access to, which puts us at a very unfair and limited limited situation, and they take advantage of that. Well, and, and I'll say this: it, it needs to get back to where we have a part time government that they're not they're not full time politicians. I actually don't think that's the case. I think we need to have term limits. Well, ter- I think two but, terms is but, what you get. Term limits too, but like to you know. In. We don't need the government's too big. Yeah, there's too much involvement. Massively in every, too big. Yeah, I mean, you know, cut about cut about ninety percent of it out and just you know let us let, leave us alone. I say this <laughs> and I mean this. I want the government to do these things: enforce my laws, collect my taxes, and protect my borders and my freedoms. Outside of that, stay out of my life. I don't need you to do anything other than that. I don't no. need you to. I don't need you to tell me where I should land morally or or where I'm. I don't need that from you. You're you're. That's not your job. It's not your job. Yeah. It's not Joe Biden's job to tell me because I am a conservative human being that I am a horrible person. 
That is not your business. What I do in my private life, Joe, it doesn't matter. You and it's the same with Trump. If I'm a Democrat and I'm out there doing whatever Democrats do or liberal people do, it's not Trump's job to personally judge those people. It's your job to run this country. So shut up and run the country. Don't, Amen. Don't get on TV and I'm. I mean, dude, it was shocking how hateful it was. Like it was, it was just out of. It was so out of bounds. Like it was so, like it, I remember back in the day when even if you didn't like the president, you respected him because he was the president. I can't. I have no respect for that man. None. Like I, I wouldn't give you a piece of salted awful for him. No, I mean, well, that's a, that's. That, I think that's the thing. We don't have statesmen anymore. Yeah. You know the the whole idea of like, you know, really being this honorable public figure that is. A representative of the people is just it's just done you're you're a representative of a certain establishment that is bolstered by the the elite and it's just and it goes both ways i mean it's yeah. not like you know it's it's horrid it's like the whole you know how many how many how many things does blackrock and vanguard have their fingers into yeah. i mean come on man i mean this is this is silly it's a, it's it's out of bounds man uh, it's, it's just out of insane bounds. but i mean look here's the thing this is this is what i i, I really want to impress upon people is that the government at the end of the day is allowed to do things because we allow them to do these things and I'm, and, and I'm not saying that it's a revolt or all that kind of, no, but you know, if we, if we, if we, the people say, and no, if you do these things, you're gone and that's what we do. Yeah. But isn't that the problem though? Because we don't, the, the truth is we don't live in a democracy. We live in a Republic. So even if the entire state votes for someone, the representative can vote his own way as a representation of the people. That's why we're voting them in is to, because we're, we're assuming that they're going to vote a certain way towards, but they have the power not to. Oh yeah. They can do whatever they want. So, so if we, the, the, I think the, the, I think the, that the, if you really want to get down to the brass tacks of it, it's more on a state level who we vote in because, well, we don't, Okay, so state's you know, power has been diminished quite a bit. Very much so. So there's that's one that's a one big problem in that we're supposed to be a republic, like you say. Well, and honestly, with the with the with the taking away of Roe versus Wade, I don't think it has anything to do with abortion because it didn't change anything. The state can make it legal or sure illegal as it wants yeah, to. It's just a, so it's it's not a, abortion wasn't made legal or illegal by the federal government. No. Um, I think what it was, was it was a boost in the state's power, and that caused a lot of politicians to be very uncomfortable that there was power pulled away from the federal government and pulled back to the state. So now that now people have to, it left responsibility in the hands of the people that were voting in the representatives in the state and the federal, and, and the federal government didn't like that. They didn't yes. like losing that power. Indeed. I don't think it has anything. I don't think it had anything to do with whether abortion was legal or illegal. I think it has to do with, oh no, we don't. We are no longer seen as the power and the authority in the situation. The states can do what they want. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like it's like states that have legalized marijuana. Okay, let's take a strong look at that. Okay, yeah, it's legal in Colorado, but you can't put your money in a bank because it's a f the bank is federally, the FDIC will take your money. The federal government will take your money. Yeah, that's it's, so it's, it's legal in the state, but it's still illegal federally. So, is it actually legal? <laughs> or is yeah, this the DEA like, can still come in and do stuff? Oh yeah, the, the ATF can come in and and raid you and take your stuff. The FBI can still like it's not safe. Like you, it's it's not you know, and, and I think that the whole thing with with these these states going to the legalization of marijuana, what they don't realize is that the federal government is going to do what they want to do. And where do you think they're going to go when they need cash? They're going to raid your local head shop. That's got a million bucks stuck in a safe. Cause it can't put it in a bank and they're going to confiscate that cash. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. I, I don't know. It's like, all kinds of messed up. If you ask me. Yeah. But that, you know, yeah, I, I 
it's like that whole the, the whole stuff with Texas and the border and all that. And you got the federal stuff. You got the 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 state. I mean, come on, you you're you're. I don't know. It's the that whole thing. Like it's the the government. Why why? I mean, that's our country border, but that's Texas too. Yeah. yeah. You know, and if they see a problem with it, you know, I don't know. There's all kinds of things that are just so messed up. The federal government should not be able, be able to override a state's power to protect itself. Well, it really it just shouldn't be able it, to. It's not supposed to be able to. Yeah. Yeah. There's you very know. few things. Actually, there's very, very limited amount of things that that should ever happen. But that's not. It's not. Yeah. yeah. So. But the thing is, as a Christian. You know, God is still sovereign. Yep. He's, he's still there. It's not like he he left. I'm not like he's dormant either. You know, and and I I just want to make that clear that it's like politics is not the answer to situations. Usually, no. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Um, it's it. I think it's important to understand and to uh, be in the know of what's going on and and things of that nature. But I don't. I do not look at our government to solve anything. That's that's actually. I want them to not. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather them just no. Stay out of it. Just just go away. Right. So you know, there's a, there's a lot more we can do as a community that really impacts the state of around you more than anything the government's going to be able to do. Okay. So let me ask you this question. And I've noticed this over like the last 12, 15 years in towns and cities, people have made it a profession to mind their own business. Mm -hmm. How can we bring them out of that and bring that community interaction back? Because right now, um, somebody can get shot in the middle of Times Square, you're not going to find somebody to tell you what happened because they don't want to get involved. Right? There could be a thousand people that witnessed it, but I bet you the cops would play pretty much hell to get anybody to 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 come in and say, yeah, I saw it, and this is the guy that did it. Right? So, in, in our, you know, the, it starts with, you know, when in, in women's self-defense classes, they tell women not to yell rape yell rape people walk away people hide people don't want to see they tell you to yell fire people want to see something burn how do you fix that that's that's the over litigation of our society though that's really what that is it's like the you can get sued because you saw said something whatever or this or that and all of a sudden now you have a civil lawsuit because of what you said and they're, they're things of that nature, really. It's the over. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's too much. That that's really what it is. It's 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 a it's a. So it's the litigious nature of our society. Yeah, I mean, saying. I think I think so, yeah. dude. I mean, I think that's where it all boils down to. Like, it's like <sighs> if you see something happening, like in other words, if you were you see somebody getting hurt by someone else, and you intervene. Uh, to protect that individual, all of a sudden now you can have criminal charges put on you in some instances. Yeah. Right. Even though you were helping somebody who was getting hurt or whatever, stop if you stop a crime or, or whatever. I mean, dude, there's all kinds of things that you, you are now going to step into a world of just nonsense. Yeah. At that moment. And I think that it's because it's everybody's like, everybody's looking out for, for this crap i mean it's everybody's you, looking out for number one yeah i mean it goes it goes back to like how you see some of these situations with violence that happen and then like they get they don't even get arrested they just get like pushed over here you know or something or, or like yeah. a couple of these really heinous things that have happened and it's like there's no criminal charges filed and all this kind of stuff yeah. right i mean it's like there's in, any more that even all of that has got into a political arena that is over litigated it's, it's it's insane i mean so so yeah i mean i, I think that uh, trying to be involved anymore is a risk and i think a lot of times it's worth a risk in some some instances yeah. you know but yeah you have to be i mean you have to be careful of that because you have your own family your own 
things you have to deal with, you know? It's like, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's messed up, dude. It's, it's just really is. And I, but it's, I, I, a lot of that has to go to the community, the individual communities to kind of just work out their stuff. But we're still stuck on this whole thing where we're not getting together. We're not, you know, well, I mean, I remember too, either. I also remember, you know, when we were, when I was a kid, if, if there was a kid in the neighborhood that was doing something bad, uh, their parents were going to find out because the other parents were going to come and let them know. But now you have these situations where it's, well, but Billy up the street smoking crack. I sure hope his parents find out. That's a kid going down a bad road. Go say something. Yeah. Hey, I saw your son smoking crack. You probably need to talk to him. Yeah, that might be a thing. You yeah. should probably check that out. You should probably have a conversation with Billy about crack smoking and the bad things that can happen. You know. But then they get mad like at you. That. You know. Well, my son would never smoke crack. Well, guess what? He's over there smoking crack right now. You should go talk to him. Right. Um, but there's this, the, you know, I mean, when I was a kid, if you did something stupid, it, it was, you know, the, the, the phone game, man, before you could walk down the block to get to your house, your parents knew. And now there are kids getting away with absolutely just obnoxious amounts of horrifying things. And the parents are just in complete denial. Well, but even in the schools, dude, like it, my, when my, when my kid was in kindergarten and this older boy hit my daughter because she tripped over her feet on the way out to the whatever. I mean, you know, even that was like, it took a, it took me to be really forceful in order to get something to, to done, you know? And it was like, that was, that was probably the point where I said, this is not, I will not subject my kids to that kind of nonsense. And that's, that's why they're not in public school. I mean, that's the, one of the reasons. It's not all. Um, of them, but, but unfortunately, there's bullies everywhere. I, I right? know there is. And, but if you don't, if you don't, if you have, if you have a place that you are handing your kid off to that's, that while it's there, it's their, you know, their job to have, provide the safety and education of your kids. And if they don't do that and they're, it's not a safe place, then what, why? Why would I mean that's just no, it's beyond I will not allow that, right? Um, and fortunately we could, right? So I mean that's I think pe people don't really have that option like we do, but um but yeah, we wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't couldn't I would not tolerate that. Um, you know, and I had some really strong words to the principal. Um and, and you know, not that I was threatening, but he he understood that there I wasn't going to let it go. It's a problem. It was a problem. It better get handled. If it wasn't going to get handled, I was going to go to, <laughs> I was going to make sure it got handled one way or another. I mean, well, I mean, you know, not I that I was going to do not physically do anything, but like, you know, there's no, you, there, there's, well, there's our job is to protect our kids. Right. Um, but that's parenting. That, that, I think, I think every, like what we're saying here right now, whether it be like the community or, uh, 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 other things. It's like how we're raising our kids. Are we raising our kids to, to be, you know, to not be um, involved or to, to look the other way into like, you know, do that, not do the right thing, that kind of stuff. Is that how you're raising your kids? No, I'm not. I mean, you know, my girls are not raised like way, but Hey, you do, you do the right thing, you know? And if that doesn't happen, you come get mommy, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> my daddy makes sure the right thing's going to happen. That's for sure. Yeah. But you know, it's, there's a lot of fear. I think that's really where, where we're, what we're the cusp of what we're talking about. It's wrong that I don't. That's like, what I'm saying. I don't I, I, have any. No, like, because I think if, if you operate at a different level, again, you, it, it's, it's a, a worldview, a, a perspective on the, on the scope of things you're not going to have that kind of thing. But if, if, you know, I, I don't fear for doing the right thing. I, I, you know, I'm grounded in my moral center that I believe is pretty sound. I mean, you know, um, I can be pretty aggressive. I, I, I granted, but you know, it's not going to be for no reason. You're scary. 
Man, I can be. I, I know my my girls. I'm I'm not scared of you, but you can be scary. But we should all be okay. Any any father should be scary. Any man should be scary. Man, yeah. You there, again. This goes back to the whole thing where you're. It's not a, any benefit to society if you're weak and you're doing good. You're there's nothing you're accomplishing at that point if you're capable of violence and you restrain yourself then you're being an act of good for your family yeah. and the community yeah. right yeah. so there's i don't think anybody and look i don't want look, let, me, let me make this clear i have in no way want to have a altercation with anybody well, <laughs> I no, don't. Not the plan, and i i right? i and a matter of fact i would rather take a physical assault rather than give one i'll say that um, but I'm certainly not incapable of doing that. You know what I mean? Well, I, for me, it's it's a matter of I grew up kind of rough, and in, in in I grew up in a, a neighborhood where it was, you know. Yeah, you did. You you had to you had to defend yourself. You had to be able to you had to be able to go and and for me, the my thing is I. Do I want to have a confrontation with someone? No, not at all. Will I? Yeah, for sure. But it's like if a, you I mean, push it to that I, level, which it, you got to go pretty far. Like that's not. I'm not like just snapping out. Like if you no. if you push me to that point, then you've done a lot of work. Well, that's look. Here's here's the deal, right? We we we're we're not young pups, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not it's not in, in our advantage to like, because, dude, if we get in a, it doesn't matter if we win an altercation or not, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not yeah. that's not fun. I'm creeping up on fifty, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's like that's not that's not where we're that's not anybody, but you know, I mean, it, it, but it's not even just a physical altercation. It's like, are you do you, are you gonna say something? I mean, I know in public. Uh, there's been several times where I've seen I've seen something and I'd be like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you don't do that out here in public and yeah. just complete strangers, yeah. right? Doing something, yelling or doing something, and you know it'd be like, no, you know you are you do not do that yeah. here and, and no, you take that somewhere else, don't do that around me. And they get all uh, it's happened to happen several times, you know they get all flustered and they, rawr, 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 rawr. but you know it's like. <laughs> I don't care no. what you say, dude. I mean, no. You want to throw down? We'll go over here. But you don't do that here. Yeah. You know, it's like in the middle of Walmart, and you're sitting there like yelling at your spouse about something or or your kids. You're or like screaming, screaming at, at the at person them. that works at Walmart. Yeah. Like no, like, you, you are know. no. You don't do that. You this know. isn't. This isn't freaking. This is no. <laughs> it's not okay. It's not okay. And I mean, but in the same way that it's not okay. And this is the one I see more often than not. The obnoxious kid who's being rude to the people around him and the parent just going, oh, he's just a handful. No, he's a jackhole yeah, you've, that you've, you've raised to be a jackhole and you didn't teach him respect and you didn't teach him to respect his elders and you didn't teach him to have respect for yeah. the people around him. And now he's out of control, out of control. And you're just you think it's cute. It's not cute. It's not cute at all. It's actually, it actually shines poorly on you as a parent and as an adult that well, you allowed your child it, it, to take control. And that's where, look, parenting, you got to be a parent. You know, you can't be their friend. You know, one of the things, Come you know, I now. had this conversation with my boys last night. Which you're able to do because you got a new job. I know, because I have an awesome job that I get to do with my kids. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> We were sitting at the kitchen table last night eating dinner, which, by the way, my wife made this smokehouse chili. Dude, it's so good. Oh, I bet it. That sounds anyway. good. All right. Well, my, you guys come over. We'll make it. It's so good. Yes. You'll get, it's, it's, it's like super beefy with the smoky, delicious flavor. It's really good. Anyway, um, you know, we were talking about an issue that a friend was having and, you know, it came up that the, the parent wanted to be the friend of the child. And I looked at both of my kids and I said, let me tell you both something. I said, I love you so much that sometimes I astonish myself. But because of that love and that need to protect you, I cannot be your friend. No. And I said, both of you know and understand the rules in this house and where you can and cannot go, don't you? And they both 
nodded their heads yes. And I said, and the reason you know that is because I've made it my life's passion since the day you came into this earth to be a good father, to be a father, not a friend, not a buddy, not a pal. Doesn't mean I don't love you. Doesn't mean I'm not going to go do fun things with you. Doesn't mean we're not going to have good times together, but I have to be first and foremost, your father. Well, I mean, even, even when my, my kids were like, or my stepson was like, um, he got older. And I mean, even then I said, look, man, it's not my job to be your friend. Yeah. That's not, I mean, even, even as you're an adult now, it's not, it's not your, it's not my job. It's, I'm still your dad. Yeah. I'm going to be your dad. And that means I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to try to guide you the right way. Yeah. Even when you don't like it. Even when you don't like it. And I certainly am not, I said, I love you and I'm I'm here for you, but I'm your dad, not your friend. <laughs> we can yeah. be, we can be buddy, buddy sometimes, but I'm your dad. Exactly. So as we are wrapping this up, I think we've covered a lot this evening. <laughs> We have covered quite a bit, <laughs> but I'm glad we're back. Right. I'm glad you're feeling better. I know you're not fully energized Reg, but you're Reg nonetheless. And I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, glad you're back. Even my dude, I was, t- I tell you, um, my like voice was, it's still not quite, it was like really raspy. Yeah. <laughs> and it still is a little bit, but I'm just glad to be able to like, I'm eating solid food and. I'm conscious and, and I was able, I was able to work this week as hard as that was. Um ah, you'll be back at it by next week. You should be fine. Yeah, I think so. It's a little it's it is it is better. And then you know, yeah, but yeah. I, I'm I'm glad my I I'm glad my college work is over and I've 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 done what I could do. I'm I'm still a little bummed that I I didn't give it I did. Yeah, but dude, <laughs> your know, performance know, overall is fantastic, so I'm but, sure they're taking full consideration that you are an A student. So I don't know, man. I guess I, I guess I'll just leave it like, you know, we parenting is hard, but it is a parenting role. It's not a friend role. Yeah. You know, we're we're really should focus on the community, less about politics, more about what you can do for the people around you. Yeah. And and really just focus on how you can be better, whether that's to be a better son, better man, better friend, better, you know, person in the community, whatever. Just just focus on that. I mean, you know, For sure. Just I, I don't know. I, I would say any more. The political arena is just so such a circus that it it, it doesn't even it doesn't even warrant the like. Allegiance to any certain party anymore. Not I mean, at all. You know, it's like just, it's Not just, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just utter chaos. And then, you know, be in the know, but don't take that stuff so seriously either. Yeah, there's no reason to do that. Yeah, no. Like, subscribe, Follow, comment, subscribe, hate, love, whatever it is. Ambi- We're R and B talks. Yeah. Ambiguity. Yeah. R and B talks. Later's. See you.